Okay, so I'm going to turn this music down a tad, and we're going to jump right into it. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Okay, everybody, welcome to my studio. My name is Michael Markowski. Maybe this is the first time you've seen me, or maybe this is the 17th time in a row that you've seen me. Um, 
I'm going to be showing you a little bit about how to draw today, as you may know, and those of you that are joining me for the 17th time, or maybe you've been watching a whole ton of previous videos over the years. Uh, if not, if this is um, the first time you're seeing this uh, face of mine and my mustache, etc., well, welcome. Uh, you don't need to have watched all those episodes to do what we're about to do today, or any of the other things. You can kind of pop in and eat the malacart if you like, uh, but I think it, you will find it's they've probably been quite helpful. Uh, so um, I encourage you to to check some of those other ones out uh, at your at your leisure. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to draw faces. And we're, we're starting out at ground zero. I'm assuming you've never done this ever before. And you want to learn something brand new. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm gonna, I'm, we're going to start out from the bottom. I always think about like starting uh, from assuming people don't know anything and then kind of working our way up. And sometimes there's some people who are watching like, oh my goodness, oh, yawn. Don't, don't don't worry. Things are going to get more complicated as we go, in in a gentle way. Um, but uh, and I also think it, it's some of these basic things that we're covering are useful for even advanced artists. It's always I personally find it's really helpful to every once in a while to sort of do a little check in with myself and and pick up. I, I love reading how to draw books and seeing if I can just pull a little bit of some kind of technique out of there. And I also love watching other artists um, uh, or teachers just teach and just seeing how they do what they do. And if I can incorporate that into my own education as a, as a teacher. Okay, blah, 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 blah. You just want to get to work, right? Okay, so let's open our sketchbook up to a blank page. And I'm going to show you, um, if I can find it, some images here. This is an artist I thought would be kind of fun to uh, to look at. His name is Julian Opie. He's a, um, a British artist. To be honest, I don't really know. Let's just uh, do a little quick um, search on Julian Opie here. Ah, 62 years old, born 1958. Um, he, I know he was nominated for the Turner Prize, which is like the big art prize in uh, England or the United Kingdom uh, many years ago. Oh, and he was taught by Michael Craig Martin, who, if you look up his artwork, oh, where did that go? What am I doing here? Michael Craig Martin is, uh, oh, that, that's not, um, uh, it, his work is kind of similar, very uh, based on these big solid colors. And if you live in Calgary, Alberta, which is my hometown, there is a, um, a LED sculpture of people walking uh, near this bridge in downtown. I don't know if it's popular. I haven't lived in Calgary in 20 some years. Um, I imagine I have this feeling that people don't like it. <laughs> I just have a feeling that's that's the way uh, public art is in in uh, my hometown. But uh, that's a whole topic for another discussion. Let's look at his artwork. So the you've probably seen um, maybe maybe I don't, I don't know who's who's all watching. He did the cover to a Blur album um, back in the day. I don't know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago. And this was the, the album artwork for it. So you, you may have seen that, and that might be your how you've uh, heard about him. But long before he was doing this, he was he was doing these portraits. I don't want it that blur anymore. Get rid of the blur. Um, that look very super minimalist in their style, like very little detail. So. These, um, this image, which we're going to use as our, um, as our source for today, is called Elena Schoolgirl with um, Lotus Blossom. So let me find this here. Let's bring this up, make it nice and big. I'm just seeing in the, in the corner of my eye, people were having problems seeing me, and then some people saying they didn't have problems seeing me, so I don't know what's 
what's going on in the world. Um, but uh, <laughs> okay, so we're gonna we're gonna this is what if if this is blah 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 blah. If this is the first time you've uh, you've tuned in, what I the way that I organize these episodes is we generally start with a warm-up drawing that lasts somewhere between five, 10 minutes. And then we do some basic lessons and then we finish with a finished drawing by the end. And that usually takes all in all about an hour, hour and 10, 15 minutes. And at the last 15 minutes is any time for questions or if people have drawings they want feedback on, they can send them to me through Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or, uh, Facegram and Twitter book or uh, so you go down below and you can see my social media links and you could send them to me direct message that way uh, so that's an option for you maybe uh, I, even if you don't participate in that just watching me give feedback on other people has been very helpful for just my experience as a teacher um, you can just sort of talk about one person's drawing and everyone is sitting there oh that's interesting I get it I get it okay cool so I am going to eventually teach you how to do this drawing in a very efficient way. So what I would like for us to try to do is try to draw this just based on how you would approach it normally. So how would you, if you hadn't taken this class, how would you make this a reproduction of Julian Opie's drawing. So I'll show you how most people will approach this drawing. You know, having taught classes for many years, I've been in in classrooms and looked over people's shoulders hundreds and hundreds of times, and I've seen. Um, oh, I need to get a different version of this here. Let's do this. Um, so I've seen lots of different approaches to. Um, to drawing and so it's always interesting to me to see what people do and generally people approach it in the same way so let's I'm going to uh, you you're welcome to just to race ahead and start trying to draw this drawing I'll show you one way that I think is most the most common way that I see people doing this kind of drawing so most often what I see people doing is they might let's say start up at the top and kind of work their way around and then maybe let's say we'll put in this hair or cherry blossom or I guess is that what it was okay and then they come around and you're welcome if you want to follow me you're welcome to, to follow this or just do your own thing and and then we can kind of compare notes so I think a lot of people would start like this and then they go, okay, I'm gonna do an ear. Okay, and then I'm gonna come back up here with this hair. And then I'm gonna come back over here. And we'll, we'll see how good of a drawing this is. You know, again, I've had many years of experience doing drawing, so. I have a bit of unfair advantage over over everyone, um, but I think so. This would be sort of some kind of combination, I think, of how a lot of people approach things. Um, okay, then maybe let's say we do this part of the hair, get this curl in here. Now I'm not saying that what I'm doing is necessarily a a bad way of working. It's uh, if it works for you, then you you just you should ignore what anybody else says, you know. But if you're finding your your way of drawing is uh, not working, then it might be time to learn a lesson like we're going to learn today. So this might be how people go here. We put in. Some eyebrows, nose, and chin here. 
Now, of course, we could just we could go around these uh, lines and thicken them all up. So this kind of style, this very um, consistent line, you know, is very unusual. You know, it's for the most part, if you think about like art history and people using paint brushes and pens, uh, pencils, it, w it would have been very, very hard to get a line that was super consistent like this. You can get a fairly consistent line, you know, and by consistent I mean the thickness is the same throughout the entire thing, and then the pressure is the same. So it's not only staying the same thickness, but it's not getting lighter or darker, right? So to do that, you would need, like, you know, calligraphy pen, maybe. Um, oh, this other ear, I guess, is hidden by hair. Um, so this would be one way of doing it. You just have to be kind of very careful to try to kind of go back over these lines and make them equal thickness. Um, but with the advent of the computer, this is actually something the computer really excels at, is the consistency, right? Um, it's actually easier for the computer to create a line that is the same width and pressure or density throughout the entire image than not because it just involves less information for the computer to have to save and process and all that kind of stuff. You know, if the line gets thicker and thinner and lighter and darker throughout, well then the file size would have to get bigger and bigger and bigger because it has to remember all those little tiny details. So, let me see. So this image, you know, is, is something that it probably wouldn't even have occurred to anybody 500 years ago to even try to do a picture like this. So, I, you know, I know some people would look at it and go like, ugh, it looks like it's done on the computer. It looks so boring. It's so simple. Um, I, I understand that kind of um, reaction that you might have. Um, but I, what I think is interesting about this work is it really you know, Julian Opie tapped into a kind of a, uh, um, he recognized this style. I, I don't know if it had necessarily been used so much elsewhere, but it was just something that, that was kind of instantly recognizable to, to, it just felt like it very much a part of today, right? It, like unmistakably today you know like a computer generated font as opposed to a handwritten font even like a the printing press would have different variations and you know um and there's that charm of like old old prints versus like a digital print where that is you know about as close to a robotic image anyway so that this is a drawing that i did <laughs> obviously <laughs> um in the way that I think most people would approach this this problem, all right? Uh, I'm not saying, you know, I'm sure there might be some other people who may have started with the eyes, and then I think some other people may have started trying to draw the chin, maybe tried to draw from the hairline out. That would be, uh, usually is the way that most uh, people when they're beginning learn how to draw. They just start kind of finding a few details and start putting them in. And eyes are generally where we start. And eyes, by the way, is what we're gonna spend all of next class working on. We're gonna really dive deep into the structure of the eye, how to draw eyes from different angles and to show some different expressions of the eyes. And then we're gonna kind of move slowly through all the different facial features. Um, and I know it might seem like we're going to spend an hour drawing an eye. Well, if we can, eyes are the, you know, the windows to the soul. And if we can nail that, boy, oh boy, we can really capture a likeness or make a drawing that looks like somebody very effectively just by describing the eye well. Um, so we're going to, anyway, I'll, we'll get into that as we go. But um, 
Okay, so this would be how most people would approach this. So now let's, we've got our warm-up drawing. We've kind of, we've, we've attempted to do this in one way. Now I'm going to show you, and I don't think this, what I've done is necess is a bad drawing, but I think there's, um, you know, I think that the, let's just kind of go back to compare these a little bit. Um, it feels to me in my drawing, like, you know, the, this, face is a little bit wider over here the neck is a little bit uh, long here you know like even this hair might have come up around here so I I had to because I'm drawing kind of exposing these areas all together I'm actually quite surprised at how well it turned out following that process and that is probably because I have years of experience, so I already can visualize the space of the page, the composition fairly well, right? That just comes with, with practice. But let's try doing this again. Well, how about let's, what, we're gonna, what I'll do is I'm gonna show you the basics of the structure of the human face first, and then maybe we'll come back and we'll draw this. We're gonna draw a whole bunch of other faces and then we're gonna finish with one final finished drawing of a face um, in just over half an hour from now. Okay, so let's bring this up here and I'm gonna, let's, let's learn a little bit about how to draw the human head. Okay, so to begin with and i'm going to use you can just use a regular pencil from the library or whatever you know you don't have to use anything fancy right you've here's this is you know a, a so-called regular pencil right the kind of pencil you know from your uh, big box store right with a little bit of make sure it's got a little bit of paint on it these are important <laughs> and so you could use this you could use, you know, a little bit more higher grade artist pencil if you want. I this is I like Stedlers. They should uh, be sponsoring me. Um, but uh, I'm going to use some colored pencils just so you can see the different kinds of steps that I do, so it's not so uh, confusing. Okay. Um, so if we were I'm just going to draw the, the basic structure of any face. All faces kind of share the same kind of structure. So let's draw an oval shape. All right? Look at mine's not perfect. Um, it doesn't end in the exact right place. It looks a little bit, you know, tilted to one side. You know, if you want, if you want to try to make it um, so-called better you could kind of use this kind of sketching method and you could kind of trim a little bit off and it doesn't doesn't matter right I would have been happy with my first one but I just want I, I often try to purposely make mistakes when I'm drawing just so you can see that it's not the end of the world when that happens okay so either way, we've got some kind of an oval shape on our page. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna divide it in half, right? And if you've seen my previous drawings, what I like to do is this kind of, I kind of imaginarily draw the line so that I can feel how that goes. And you can see, eh, it's not even perfect either. Let's draw this again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw the line darker than you'd probably want, but Again, just for our, and I'm going to tilt the sketchbook since I've made my head a little bit <laughs> on an angle. Okay, so this is dividing the, the face in half, right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to divide the face in half horizontally, right? So you could use a ruler, but you don't need, so I'm just going to kind of find that middle, right like that. It's okay if it's a little bit up or down. Don't worry about frantically erasing or anything at this point. We just weren't we're learning the basic structure. So, what do you think, what part of the face do you think fits on this line? When I do this in a classroom, I always ask people, and I would say 
80% of the time, people would say this is the nose. The nose goes right in the middle of the face. Um, which is, is not surprising um, that people would say that, because often we think of our nose as being in the middle, but actually our eyes are much closer to the center of this oval shape than our nose would be. So this is our eye line, right? So on our eye line, we're going to take this and we're going to divide it in half, right? So from the center of the face to the outside of the face, we're going to make a little mark here, right? So that's going to be the pupil, the little black dot that expands and contracts inside of our eye. This is where that's going to be assuming we're looking straight forward. Same thing here. Let's go from the outside edge to the middle, and we're going to make another mark there. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is go from the, the eye line down to the chin, right? And we're going to put a mark halfway down, right? So halfway down... So what do you think this line is for? Right? We, it's obviously not going to be the eyes. Is this the mouth or the nose, do you think? I, some people will say the mouth. So if we had a mouth here, we would have the nose would be, I guess, in between here. That would leave us a really big chin. Which, if you wanted to create a caricature, you want to draw Jay Leno or somebody, right? Having a big chin would work really well. But this is going to be where our nose is going to go. All right? And then halfway between the nose and the chin is where we're going to put our mouth. And just while... Well, maybe I won't, won't overcomplicate things just right now. Again, this is just as a reminder, this is an introductory class. I do teach portraiture and figure drawing at uh, a university here in Vancouver. And we, I go into way more depth than we're doing here. But I don't think anybody who would be taking those classes or anything near that is watching today. We, we would you know, be stuck drawing from skulls and all and all that kind of stuff. We go way more in depth, but for our purpose, this is gives us a good kind of starting block. Okay, so eyes, nose, mouth. The ears fall if we draw a line from the go from the nose out to the edge. The ears go between the eyes and the nose. So we could put a little You know, and some people have big ears and some people have s small ears. Some people have ears that come way out, you know, like Barack Obama, you know, is kind of big, big ears, right? And there's some people who have ears that are f almost flush against their, or you Van Gogh, you just chop one of them right off. Okay. But again, once we get this basic structure down, we can really manipulate these things Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the hairline in, right? Where the hair starts growing on our forehead. And so generally, you know, is halfway between our eye line and the top of the head. So we do this. Here would be the hairline, right? So you'd have something like this. Okay, so this is generally where the hair is going to start from. Obviously, you have somebody with a receding hairline, right? Or their hair comes all the way back, or they don't have any hair at all, right? Then that's that's where things are would, you know, we, again, we we need to find the basic structure before we do anything else. So now let's um, let's go over. Let's, let's continue here, putting in the, the basic structure, actually, before I go too much further. So let's now put in the eyes, so the shape of the eyes. So let's say this is our pupil. I'm going to make these, actually, I'm going to use the blue here, now that we got the basic structure. So this is our pupil, 
Make them a little bit bigger. Okay. And then I'm going to surround the pupil with the iris. So the iris is the part of the eye. And I'm going to make these little bicycle spokes coming out from it. So the iris is the part of the eye. When people say your eyes are green or brown or blue or fluorescent yellow or whatever, they're talking about your iris, right? So the iris, you know, you could... You can color, let's see, let's put a little green in here just for the sake of... Okay. So we've got our iris. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add the, the basic shape of the eye. Now, every single person has a different shape of the eyelids, right? You're, you can almost think of like the eyelids as like a fingerprint. And if you're drawing someone's face, paying really close attention to the, the folds of the eyelid is, is the best secret to, to capturing, again, what's called a likeness, to, to help make a drawing look like whatever it is, a face or a dog or whatever, right? So, but we're, again, we're not... I'm not interested in describing a specific person. I just want to describe a very generic person that we can use to, to illustrate and then we can abstract from. Okay, so for our purpose, we're just going to draw this kind of um, uh, semi-circle. And you notice how it's crossing and even overlapping a little bit on top of the iris. I do that on both sides here. Okay. And we're going to do the the one on the bottom here in a second and I just I think it's worth you can look in a mirror which I'm actually going I should remind you for next class if you have a mirror like a little pocket um have some here maybe while we're drawing I'll, I'll dig them up in a second but you know like just a little they look like a little uh, compact mirror you know like for makeup or something they're about that size or smaller or you can use your phone and you could take a picture or just you know have your camera up and you could look at it but you know if I'm looking at my own eye right you can see that the top of my eyelid and the bottom eyelids are both touching the iris, right? The only time that there's a little bit of white space on the top and the bottom is if someone is like, <gasps> or looking down, right? Otherwise, you know, if you're looking at me right now, the my eyelids are, are touching or usually even overlapping our iris here like this. Okay. So, now we've got these. Now, I think it's also important to just keep in mind that the eye is an eyeball, right? It's a round, circular, round shape. So I'm actually going to draw this, our eyeballs in here. Now you don't, if you want, you can do this. This is, our again, our sketch to of the basic structure and proportion so it might be helpful for you just to to kind of see how this works and i always you know i think it's important these little things help us later on if we're conscious of this so if we think of this as the eyeball right the eyelids and the skull or helping the eyeball stay in place so that, you know, you bend down to tie your shoes, your eyeballs don't just fall out and roll onto the floor, right? So the, the eyelids are kind of keeping your eye in place and protecting it, right? In fact, we forgot, to, we want to put some eyelashes. Let's put a... <laughs> uh, I'm going to put a little bit of eyelashes on here. Put some on the top and on the bottom, so on both sides. And on the bottom, our eye eyelashes are much smaller. 
you know, sometimes if you're drawing a, a, a male figure, you may even omit the eyelashes on the bottom, even though we have them. If you're drawing a female, you often will make these longer, you know, you know some people will make them ridiculously long. So it's up to you how long you want to make them. Okay. So if we think about this being our eyeball, then we, you know, the, 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 the skull, we have kind of our, um, the socket, you know, sits in, in kind of in, we have the ridge of the eyebrow kind of is usually right above or touching these, the eyeball, right? To keep your eyes from falling out, right? So this would be your eyebrow, right? So right, part of this, this kind of, or, well, it's not even the eyebrow, it's the, this kind of, you can feel it right above your eye here, right? So it's this kind of area here, and then your eyebrow, you know, the, because this, this kind of rolls out, right? So this, so this would be where your eyebrows are going to be. All right, so, and then this is going to come down to where our nose is. So I'm just going to draw all of this in. When we're drawing a person's portrait, we, we don't draw all of this, but we want to know where it is. So when we're, when we're drawing, we can kind of highlight some of these things. Like you notice in the Julian Opie image, right? He's omitted a lot of details, right? There's, we don't see what's the, the bridge of the nose, right? And we don't see the eyelashes or eyelids, the iris, you know, he's part of his style is to selectively omit those details. But again, we're, we're learning everything. And then part of your style is what do you decide to focus on? So if this is someone's eyebrows, they're going to be somewhere up top here. And usually they're symmetrical. All right. And so they sit right up top there. Now, some people have sunken eyes and some people have have eyes that appear to kind of come forward a little bit but um so here we, we might see a little bit of kind of some ridges you know if you have if you're drawing somebody who's really tired right well this is where those kind of marks are going to be right because they're literally kind of emphasizing the shape of the eyeball, right? Okay, so another, a couple other things here. In this is maybe more for next week, but you know, you have like that uh, the, your tear ducts in the corner of your eye, and then the top eyelid, you know, generally overlaps onto the bottom one. So this is a little subtle thing. We'll talk about it next week, but you know, this would come up. And kind of down but whatever well again we'll talk next week okay so we've got our eyes in place here now let's draw the nose now the nose we're gonna spend a whole class i think that that's next this time next week we're gonna spend a whole class talking just about the nose and i'm gonna show you dozens of different images of different artists who draw noses and um uh, because the nose is ultimately the place where artists can inject their own style into a, a portrait most effectively. And this is usually the place when people are making their own drawings of faces where they struggle and they get upset with them. Like, so they might do beautiful part of the face. Oh my goodness, looks great. And then they come down here. Oh, maybe I know where the nose is going to be and then I'm going to do the mouth and then they come to the nose and I often see drawings where the, the nose is a big ball of, of erased mess, right? It's all smudged because they've been working on this area. The reason why the nose is such a difficult thing to draw is there are very few hard edges. So unlike the eye where there's, we have eyelashes, we have the eyelids, we have eyebrows, we have the iris and the, and the pupil, all of which 
have a relatively strong contrast in terms of light and dark from things next to it and around it, right? So we can pretty much, we can draw a line describing an eyelid very well. When it comes to the nose, however, it's very tricky trying to find where the line goes, right? If you're painting, it actually can be easier to paint a nose than it is to draw a nose because you can use a bunch of different blobs of color to create that effect. But when we're drawing, we're always looking for the edge, right? So how do you draw the nose when you don't have those edges? So that's why everybody has a different way of drawing a nose. And that's why the, the way people draw noses is a, a, like a, such a unique part of each person's artwork. So people can become very hard on themselves because they're, they're not happy with the way they draw the nose, not necessarily aware of the fact that that is actually what is making their artwork so unique. But anyway, I'll, um, the, the long and short of it, if we think of the nose, is this kind of round shape with two smaller shapes on the outside, right? So we have this kind of round, like you can draw it like a circle almost, like, like three little balloons or something, or, or one big balloon with two small balloons next to it. So the way that I, I show people how to draw a nose kind of most easily is I think of this, we draw kind of the, a, a, the bottom of the nose and then I add a little curl on either side, right? So it's like we have semicircles, like one semicircle down, up and down again, right? And then I'm just gonna finish this on either side with another semicircle. Right. So this, and then you know, this would be where your nostrils are gonna be. So you can even kind of turn this inward like this. Right. Now this works well if you're drawing somebody straight on, but as soon as people start turning their head up or they go down, this changes. Again, we're gonna spend a whole day talking about noses, but I, I just for you to get some confidence of having to, to describe this feature for now, this is gonna work. Now, again, some people will draw the, you know, emphasize the bridge of the nose. And then some people, in fact, like again, like Julian Opie here, all we have are just the nostrils illustrated. We've completely removed all of the other details of the nose. That's a stylistic choice that he made. Uh, but I do often see a lot of people when they're drawing, especially drawing women, will omit almost the entire nose and just draw the nostrils. Or um, you often see, uh, even in, in like film, They'll, they, they'll blast the face with a lot of light on like a female actress. And, you know, this, this is very famous in like older films, film noirs, where a, a woman in a close up would be shot with a very soft kind of focus and very bright light. So it would kind of blow out a lot of the features of the face. And then we'd have these very, you know, a lot of mascara and eyeliner around the eyes. So the eyes pop, the lips pop, but the nose is DMs. I, that is just a, um, a stylistic convention that, that took. anyway. So we've got this nose and then let's add some lips. So to do the lips, we, the other thing too, for even before we begin the lips, is just look, you can look at, at my lips or your own lips if you have your little mirror, right? Is a lot of times people draw, you know, the lips as just like a semicircle or a line. When in reality, when we look at our lips, there's, it's, you know, like a, um, a mountain range, right? It go, there's this line that goes up and down and up and down. So we want to capture that. So this is the line between, this is the top lip up here and this is the bottom lip. So what I often start with 
is just to add this little V shape. And then, right, so pointing down, and then I go down and up. And technically, this, the outside of um, the, uh, the mouth matches up with our pupil. All right, so I'm going to show... How do I... So kind of roughly, if we, if we imagine like a dotted line matches up here. Some people have, have kind of a, a mouth that's kind of smaller or larger. Okay. Now I'm exaggerating this a little bit just so it's it's easier for you to see at home. If I was drawing something, I probably wouldn't make this quite as pronounced of a of a um, as a set of lines that I'm doing now. But for our purpose, I think this works well. Okay, and I always think it's in, if just if you exaggerate a little bit, you can always tone it down. Toning it up is harder. So let's now do the top lip. So this is the that little divot. You can't really, I don't have a mustache, so you can't really see it. But we got this little divot, and then we're gonna come down here. Okay. And you know, some people, we, we can draw lips that come way up. You know, you get lip injections or whatever those things are called, and you just make those lips huge, right? You got big lips. Same thing with the bottom lip here. So on the bottom lip, we kind of do the opposite, right? You're gonna give it just a little bit of a curve and then we're gonna come up. So curves downward and then up. Again, and then we're gonna spend a whole day talking about lips, drawing different lips. Now, so again, I'm exaggerating things, making them a little bit bigger you could make this bottom lip could be very small same thing here right all of those details give a, a person individual um, identity so now um, we've got the lips we're, we're gonna spend a whole day talking about ears and ears are really complicated so for today's class I'm just gonna kind of leave them as these relatively we can kind of draw a little bit often people will do something like this kind of showing the top and then this like that and now the chin the chin again for you know for a female often we draw the chin is kind of being relatively kind of straight, almost coming to it towards a point for kind of a, a really strong, you know, masculine, heroic kind of person with this chin, you know, the jaw would come out, right? So, but we're just going for the super generic. So we're just gonna keep this a round face. You know, some people have really big chins some people got small chins you know it's so and i'm gonna add just a little kind of mark here for that now some some people might be saying oh like why is this the chin should be bigger well it could be bigger it also could be smaller right the nose could come up it could come down the lips could come up the lips could come down you're, so you're sort of getting where I'm going here. The, the point is, is we just want to figure out for now this basic structure. Okay. So now let's do a hairstyle. What hairstyle should we do? Um, let's uh, just do a quick search here for... Let's look at this Julian Opie again. 
Looking for, well, here's this Elvis here. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a look at that while I, I draw this Elvis. Um, so, um, if I was drawing that kind of Elvis character, the hair is going to begin here, All right? So let's just imagine I'm following one hair. You know, so it's growing from the skin coming out here. All right, so I, we're not going to draw every piece of hair, but I just think this is helpful. All right, so all this hair is coming up. All right, so that gives you an idea of where this hairline would be. Now, again, some people have hair, a hairline that is really low. Right? I remember when I was in school, people would make fun of me because people like your looks like your eyebrows are gonna grow into your, are gonna creep up your forehead into your your face, right? Um, versus some people have, have have a higher hairline. That's what makes this world great. Is we got so many different kinds of styles and of body shapes and all that kind of stuff, right? So let's just say we've got all this hair kind of coming down the side of our face and i'm going to continue this let's say the, there's usually a part in the hair it could be down the middle it could be on the sides but let's say this is the part and this is kind of where this hair is going to change direction now if i just did this right if this would be like somebody with their hair pulled back into a ponytail, right? We could put the ponytail up here and this hair is like pulled, stretched back over, you know, the, 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 right up as close to the skull as possible. But even then it would kind of bubble up a little bit, right? This is, imagine this is the skin of the head. So for us right if we were drawing this elvis we need this hair to kind of come up off of the head all right so i'm going to draw this hair and then we're going to have the hair kind of coming down here all right so this hair has volume right it's coming up off of the head right so it's just going to kind of continue this Right, so this hair okay and in fact I'm just gonna use the side of my pencil just to kind of quickly shade this in to make it a little bit more easier for people to see. Okay, and then now we need to do the, the um, neck, right? Just to finish off this drawing. So the neck, if, we're, if I was drawing, let's say a big muscle bound guy, right? The neck would almost appear to come right out of the ears, right? So the neck could come out from here. Right, even just, you can see when I put those lines down there, this looks like a guy who's like really jacked up, right? Versus if I put the neck right here, now this looks like a child, right? A, a little baby, like we got a 10 month old daughter up, upstairs and her neck is very small, right? You got this big head wobbling on this little tiny neck. So, in, if we're drawing uh, you know your regular female right it's going to be maybe right around here often I kind of think about you know if I take a line from where the lips are right somewhere in this direction right so a really thin woman would be a little bit shorter than that and then your a, a regular woman or male figure kind of a thin male would be right around here so but this would be also where you would look at the person you're drawing and try to find that where those lines are going to go that makes sense i just want to see you i got everything the basics we're going to talk um for for our purpose we're not going to go into like the structure of the cheeks and you know all that the, the um 
I think that that's probably enough for right now. So what I want to do now is I want to finish, I want to apply this to making a finished drawing for today. This already, I think, looks, I'm pretty happy with this drawing. So let's do this again, but, in, but we are going to use um, this image that I have here of the artist Edvard Munch. And I just realized we were talking about Edvard Munch last week a little bit. Um, but uh, I, I just like this, this draw. I've sh used this in classes for years and the, the results are usually really um, satisfying for everybody, including myself, seeing people draw this. So I'm just gonna use what works <laughs> and we're gonna draw this drawing. So let's, let's do this again. So um, I'm, and if you wanted to use any other image, the secret would be to Um, the secret would be to find a picture of a person who's looking as directly at the fo the camera as possible. Because as soon as people start looking to the side, looking down, looking up, some of the things that we're talking about, they're still there, but they are complicated, right? Because all of a sudden this line right down the middle of the face, when we turn here, there's actually just gonna be less of this, you can see less of my cheek is showing than this, right? And now you could see this whole ear, you don't see this ear at all. So that's a whole other thing for another video. But if what I would encourage you to do over the course of this next week is, is look online, look at pictures of your friends, go to your friend's Facebook and like pull some photographs off and see if you can just draw a little, they don't have to know, they don't have to know you're doing that. Um, but it will help you kind of practice. Although I would suggest if you're doing any kind of sketching to try to avoid drawing celebrities or, you know, people, you know, because it can lead to a lot of frustration. Cause if you're trying to draw your husband or your daughter or so and so and so, and you've, this is the first time you've ever tried to draw a face you're gonna be frustrated pretty quickly because you're gonna be so obsessed with getting that likeness and making it look like them that any difference is going to be so upsetting. So finding images of other people on the web, just Google random things, stock photos would be what I would do. So anyway, let's let's start this drawing. So you can see I, the Edvard Munch self-portrait, we're not even looking at it right now. We're gonna, we're gonna draw the basic structure and then we're gonna look at that image. So let's start with this oval shape again. Now, um, I will say, you know, if we look at, I just said we're not gonna look at it in here, I'm looking at it. This portrait, self-portrait, he was a, he's a kind of, he was a tall, thin guy, right? So it does, it will help us if we start this drawing by making, you know, our egg shape, oval shape to be a little bit more narrow. You know, if I went and did like a very wide, almost circular kind of face, I could still draw that portrait of Edward Munch, it's just gonna make his face look a little bit more round as we might expect, right? So if we've got this shape, let's now divide it in half. All right, I'm drawing a little bit, well, actually I'm gonna draw a little bit darker, but I want you, anything, you can always think anytime I'm using a pink pencil, this is like a, a sketch line, like an under underdrawing that we may not want other people to see. So I'm drawing it darker than you probably want to be doing because you might want to erase some of these lines. So let's divide this face in half again. All right, so this is gonna be our eye line, right? And then we're gonna divide in half for our eyes. All right, half and half, half and half. And at this point, I'm just gonna leave two little dots like that. I'm not gonna get too specific. Okay, let's go halfway between the nose, or halfway to the eye line and the chin for the nose. All right, and I can try to 
you know, match these up. It looks pretty good. And then halfway between here and here is where the mouth is going to go. Okay, and then halfway between the center of the head, the eye line, the top of the head is where our hairline is going to be. And then our ears, the bottom of our ear, here. And then the bottom of our ear, here. Okay, so just like that, you could have a sketchbook full of, you could, you know, this is what, uh, how many pages are in here? 60 pages? I could, if I wanted, it would be kind of interesting strategy now that I think about it, is to do 60 of these drawings on all the blank pages so that I've got a whole sketchbook full of blank templates. And then I could go around and just draw different faces on this template over and over and over again people you see on the bus people you see on television newscasters athletes politicians actors etc models in magazines and so on you could try to put their faces onto this template okay so now um we're going to take this image of uh, Edward Munch, and we're going to apply it onto our picture here. Okay, so do I have one? Yeah, okay, so I got this. Let's go here. And now let's put it all together. So, I think maybe take a quick moment for some tea. And I'm going to move my sketchbook up a little bit more here, just so you can kind of see matching almost one to one here okay so what do we do here how do we take this picture on the right and put it into here again if we just started going like we do with the julian op we could be in a little bit of um, hot water trying to make it work but we've now got a structure that's going to help guide us so let's say this is our pupil we're going to draw these pupils in here So the center of the eye. Now I'm just going to outline it very lightly for the iris. All right, this is where the iris is going to be, or where it is. Now let's do the eyelids. So I'm going to look at this first eyelid here. And you can see the difference, right? There, how specific this is. This eyelid comes down right over top, right? It's, it's occluding part of the iris like this. And then we've got this bottom one here, just barely touching and it kind of wraps around. Right? So if I was to darken this in, and I'm gonna darken it, but not all the way. Right. Okay. So that's one eyelid, and I'm, I'm not going to go too much further on that eye just yet. I want to try to. I like getting everything here. Now this one is also kind of uh, droopy, a little bit. I have a bit of a droopy eyelid too. So um, he's got a couple of those. So we've got this one here, and then this curves down, and then we wrap it around. And then I'm going to darken this around. Again, I'm not going to do all the details because I want to make sure I've got everything in the right place before I start doing going into the too intensive shading here. So you can see he's also kind of illustrated this, the eye lid, the eyeballs is a, as a right in here. Right, so now this he's got this is the dark under part of his um, the, the facial structure of that eyebrow bone there uh, and then he's got his eyebrow right here right same sort of thing the other reason again I like we talked about last week I like Edward Munch is this kind of very sketchy quality of his lines 
All right, so then we've got his other eyebrow coming down here. All right. So then we've got the nose. Let's dip down to the nose. And we've got, he's got a, a much more narrow nose than we drew before. So we've got this. All right, and I'm just gonna go right into these nostrils. All right, because he's got this little thing on either side. And then you can see he's really illustrated the bridge of the nose. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna go into this in more detail. Now let's go to the mouth. Now you can see in his drawing, we, if, the, if we did the mouth here, we would have a little bit larger of a gap than he has drawn himself. So let's, we're actually gonna, like I said, we're gonna move this line up a little bit. We're gonna do the mouth up a little bit higher. He's got this, so that's, this is kind of his top lip, and he's got, it's quite dark, because he's got a bit of a mustache, like I do. So this is the top lip. And that means his bottom lip is down here, because he's darkened that in, and then he's just sort of hinting at it on either side. And then we see his chin here okay so we got this basic thing in place the basic features we're going great you know here's this mustache it's in this vicinity here okay so here's illustrating kind of his the th he's got a fairly thin kind of bony face so let's, uh, we can even kind of just draw a little bit of that. So you can see if this is the outside of the edge of the head, it's, it's kind of bones in. And we got a, a little bit of the cheek. Right, you can see the kind of skull kind of form that we have here, right? And then it comes up into the head. Okay. Or maybe while we're down here, we can see that the the neck is kind of somewhere around here. Maybe make it a little bit wider. Otherwise, it's going to look a little funny. All right. And he's got his outfit. Collar, just quickly drawing these things in. Now, often see a lot of people will get get really worked up at this part of the drawing, and there's something wrong. Like they're like, ah, I don't know, something's wrong with it. I got to do uh, something. Maybe wrong with the eyes. I don't know. You know, these ears. Maybe let's make the ears. Okay, they got to draw the. Uh, what's going on? And I'll just say. Work on the hair. Before you pull up the eraser and start, you know, losing your mind, draw the hair. Because the drawing is going to change radically once we get this hair in place. So, again, he's in, in this uh, self-portrait, he's a little bit older, so his hair line has receded a little bit, right? So instead of being here... You know, it's up here, and then it's kind of up, you know, the sides of his, of, uh, you know, up on his forehead, it's receded a little higher, right? So, we're going to take that into account. So, this is this front part of the hair. And then, we've got here. And then, the shape of his hair is coming up off. Ok, 
Okay. And then let's color this in. So now, now that I've got all this in here, let's darken it up and we're going to bring this to a resolution. Okay, so I'm now going to go much darker. I know that this hair needs to get darker, so let's make it darker. Let's not sit on the fence. Probably even, you know, we can add some big solid areas of darkness as well. Okay, we got, we can darken these eyebrows. I can go over his eyebrows eyelids darken in all of this area over here okay you can see often again the stylistic thing often people will de-emphasize any kind of rings under the eyes because that will immediately make people look older and also very tired all right so just want to be a little bit cognizant of that. Okay, and then this one that droops a little bit more than the other one. Okay. come into the nose and usually one side of the nose is a little bit darker than the other right because we have the light hitting it from one side All right so we got these nostrils and then it's darker under the nose anyway and then that's kind of leading into the top lip here and then we've got his wavy, he's got like a mustache here. And this line between the top and bottom lip has got to get nice and dark. And we see some of this bottom lip and again right under here underneath the bottom lip here on the outside it gets dark okay um, and as I go into the jaw here I think I'm going to widen the jaw out a bit all right see how all of a sudden that just changes this person all right widen that jaw okay and the ear Dark nose, and like we talked about, I'm just going to give it a little bit of simplicity here. So we're about uh, five minutes from, or, or less, from finishing this drawing off. If you have any images you'd like feedback on, you want to upload those and send them to me, and also post in the comments where your image is so that I can find it because I'll have to open up you know the Twitter book and look for your things if you've direct messaged me or tagged me or that kind of thing or even if if you've done that if you got a link to it you can post in the comments um, okay and then our neck I think I'm gonna actually widen the neck just a little bit here
And then once I've done this, I'm gonna sharpen my pencil. Okay. I'm also just now gonna color in the background quickly. I think backgrounds are often the part of the f of any image that are just sort of left as an afterthought and I just think they they we've got an opportunity to really kind of to especially cuz monk um you know in this drawing paid attention to it um but it also is going to help this character pop and if you've made any kind of problems or mistakes for yourself, you can use the background to kind of chisel into the face, to widen it, or that kind of thing too, so. And I forgot, underneath the the neck, or underneath the chin in the neck, this area is going to be dark, right? Because of all that shadow coming down here. Okay. So, I'm going to hold tight here for a second while people kind of catch up and finish. I'm going to look at the comments here. <laughs> um, yeah, it's interesting. Different people writing where they would start their drawings. Uh, Jams says start from a circle. Uh Niharika says, I just want to say I would start from the bottom. Some people work from the chin and work the way up. Some people saying they work from the mo mouth, from the nose, the eyes. I mean, there's no right or wrong way of where you're going to start your drawing. Um, I will say, you know, so we've just taken this very generic kind of shape to make this face. Now, there are some kind of, you know, the the chin and the jaw could be wider and larger. My drawing makes him look a little bit more youthful than he does in the original, in his own illustration, um, which is not surprising because of just the way that I've simplified this. You know, he has moved his eyes up a little bit higher and given himself a more prominent chin and jaw. Um, but knowing how to do what he did is a little bit more complicated than what we've just done. So for our purpose, this fits a little bit more seamlessly into a, into this, the basic kind of, I can say, okay, this is half and half, as opposed to some people have slightly different, you know, the eye line is higher, you know, it's not 50, 50, but it's like, 40, 60, 58, you know, all, and it's like, if I was to do that in this class, people would be like, ah, oh, my goodness, this is too difficult. So I'm just oversimplifying things to help us get into the ballpark. Um, I think this, if you can do this, a drawing like I've just done here, you are off to the races. That would be fantastic. If you can make something like this happen in 20 or 30 minutes, whether it's the most perfect drawing or not, that's not important. It's the it's just that you are able to draw a face that looks like a face and not look like uh, I don't know uh, a set of bookshelves or something, right? Like that should be very satisfying for you, right? To be able to look at it and be like, huh, I did a face. It's not perfect, but I've drawn a face. My first face. Palash says afro, curly, curly, okay. Yeah, you could, if you wanted, again, that's one of the great things about drawing is I would also say instead of, if you've made a drawing and you're not happy with it, there's two things you, well, there's three things you do. 
the first thing that I think most people do if they've got a drawing they're not happy with is to tear it up, or even worse, if, is to cross it out. I, when I see a drawing that's crossed out in people's sketchbooks, like a little part of me just dies. I'm like, oh, oh, because um, it's it's such a missed opportunity because. First of all, that draw often when I see drawings that are crossed out, there's actually nothing wrong with them. It's different than what people expected they were going to be, but just because it's different than you expected it to be does not mean that it's bad, right? It just turned out differently, right? So that's, I cannot stress how important that is. So yes, your drawing may have looked, looked differently than you expected or looks different than I did, but does not mean it's bad. Um, so. What I would say is just to let it sit, let it marinate, put it, close your sketchbook up, go and have some chocolate brownies or go for a walk or watch some Netflix. I heard they're rebooting Unsolved Mysteries on Netflix. Did you see the, the trailer for that? Oh, I'm Unsolved Mysteries fanatic. Anyway, uh, um, so, but don't cross it out. Don't tear it out. Let it sit there. And then if you're, you come back tomorrow and you're still unhappy with it, then the next step is you could try fixing it if you want or you could try doing another version of it try starting it over and do it again and i guarantee you it's going to be better because you've already internalized some of the knowledge you picked up the first time or try graffitiing over it make it a silly drawing right so like palash is saying is you could draw an afro on edward monk's self-portrait you could draw some sunglasses on here or a New Year's party hat or turn him into a monster with scars and drool and fangs. You know, maybe the eyeballs rolling out of the head and there's a blizzard crawling. I mean, so many things you could do with your drawing than just Xing it out, right? So, um, I and I, I guarantee you, everyone here, if you've been, if you followed along, you've done a, a really good drawing. I, I just know it. I just know for a fact. Um, so I'm just going to share with you on the screen here as we're getting close to finishing up. Just a quick... Ah! Um, just kind of notes for next class is, and this is, this thing I'm using is fairly similar for every, at the end of every class, because really things are similar, is to try to now to find some images of faces, like straight on, people looking directly into the camera, or you could take your own pictures with your own phone, or go on somebody's Facebook and, you know, um, uh, pull a few pictures off, but I would suggest finding people you don't know. So, you know, again, models and, you know, through selling watches in the back of a magazine are great. And then try to draw the basic structure of those faces and then even try to put some of, uh, try to illustrate those faces onto the basic structure, right? Just attempt to do that. I think that would be a really useful exercise for you to do. Um, Okay, so we just have a couple minutes left. So if there are any questions, you want to type them in here. If you have any images you've sent me, I will uh, get to them in the next couple minutes. Otherwise, we'll take care of that next week. I don't think there was anything I had on left that are, I don't think there was anything I hadn't done um, from last week that has been needing to be done. Well, uh, okay, so Peter says, can you discuss the quality difference between an art supply store pencil and the standard yellow pencil we buy at a box store? Yes, I can, Peter. Um, good question. Um, just thinking if I what I have around here to show that might best best illustrate that. Um, okay, so the difference, and I think I've got. Let me see. What do I have? Do I have my box? I'm slowly organizing all my materials. I'm so excited. Everything is coming together. What do I have here? Hmm. So, let's move 
this out of the way. I'll show you kind of my, these are my pencil kits here. So I'm just gonna show you a few different things. So here's your regular pencil. Your regular pencil is, is usually an HB pencil, right? So if you look on your pencil, it usually says, I don't know if you could see that on here, HB. Maybe it's not going to show up perfectly well. Let me see, can I zoom in on this? Um, HB. Well, it's, I've probably chewed it up or it's been sitting in my pocket and kind of gotten a little bit beat up. But so this one, this generic one, does it even say, yeah, it says HB. I got a very shallow depth of field here. So this here um, has a, um, is your, your regular HB pencil the cheap ones you get from the dollar store or whatever um, have graphite in them and then a binder that is kind of a waxy kind of uh, texture that holds the pigment together, right? So they, they mine graphite. There are graphite mines and they dig up this powder. It looks like charcoal. In fact, you can actually buy like a ream of or a seam of charcoal they kind of look like a burnt stick, right? And and they're they're uh, you so you you know like cavemen and women would dig these things out of the ground, and you could draw on the cave wall with a piece of, of graphite or charcoal, right? But for most part these days, what they do is they they tear all that out of the uh, and they grind it up into a powder, and then they mix it in with like a big you know batch of uh, of uh, a binder that that glues it all together to keep it nice and hard so that when you drop your pencil the the lead inside doesn't shatter into a million pieces right versus the more expensive art materials have less of a binder so it has leaves less of a waxy kind of texture and if you have a really nice pencils and you drop them onto the ground it's much more likely that the pencil inside is going to crack and, and then you're when you sharpen your pencils you notice you're like constantly having to sharpen it because the inside has broken. Um, or it might have originally been one full s stick of, of graphite rather than a ground up. Looks like my microphone died there. So I'm using, thank you very much. Oh, okay. So thanks for the, those comments there telling me that my microphone, looks like this thing, the battery died. I was telling you it's like the Kramer from Seinfeld driving the, the uh, rental car till the gas tank goes empty. <laughs> Pushing it until the end. So now you probably hear a lot more background noise. Hopefully it's, you can hear my voice now. Okay, so 
we have your HB pencil. I'll do this again with even just nicer pencils so you can even see. Um, the HB, right, I can go very kind of delicate and then get darker. Here's a 2B pencil. Let me I'll just leave. There's your HB. Your 2B, which is what I like doing, you can see even I'm, I'm pressing harder and then as I go harder it's it's I can get a darker color by pressing more lightly I don't have to or I don't have to press as hard to get a darker pencil line right which is really helpful because if you're trying to draw and you want to get dark you're sometimes you're pressing really hard on a paper and it makes your hand get sore so that's why Let's say we move to, this is a charcoal 6B pencil, All right? So in here, like I am barely pressing. Look how dark that is already. Now if I press harder on here, like that's your 6B pencil. Like look at the difference here between these three here. Now let's also think about so this one gets much darker, which is great. Why don't we always use a 6B pencil? Well, because of this, right? This one here smudges a little bit. This one here smudges more. This one here, however, really smudges, right? So they each have their advantages. The HB pencil is the most popular ubiquitous pencil in the world because um, it doesn't make too dark of a mark, doesn't make too light of a mark, but also doesn't smudge too easy, but it can smudge a little bit if you're trying to use it for art purposes, right? 2B, I like a little more because you can get a little bit dark, nothing to press so hard, but you have to be a little bit more careful if your hand is resting on your sketchbook. It could blur or smudge your picture. Versus a 6B, which is great for like drawing in an art studio, but if you have it in your sketchbook and you're walking around on vacation, you get home, you open up your sketchbook and all your drawings have been, you know, you know, brushing up against one another the whole trip and then all of your drawings are kind of smudged looking, right? So I do have a lot of 6B pencils and a lot of kind of stuff in here for when I'm doing, um, drawings that I'm going to put into a frame and sell, but not so much. I don't, I would never bring a 6B pencil with me if I was going sketching in the park and then I was going to go for lunch afterwards and, or something, because it's just going to be a big pain, right? It's going to just make a mess in my, my, my backpack or that kind of thing. So does that help? Oh, well, the other, on the other end of the spectrum, are like your 2H pencil or H, 2H, 4H, 6H, 8H. Those pencils are the big, all the exact opposite. Like a, I don't, I don't even have them because I, I never ever use those kind of pencils because let's say you have a 6H pencil. Well, you can make lines that are almost invisible, right? That you can, and you could really press pretty hard on that pencil and that pencil line is still kind of faint. So architects used to use those all the time. Now everything's done on the computer, but if you were to go to an architecture office 15, 20 years ago, you'd see mostly like 2H, 4H, 6H pencils, because they could be drawing just like normal, but creating very, very lightly drawn lines that they could easily erase, right? Um, and also a 6H pencil, like you'd never have to sharpen because it's gonna stay nice and sharp forever. <laughs> Um, I always joke, like if you're, if I was being sent to prison, I would stop at the art supply store and fill my pockets full of 6H pencils. So when I get there, I could like, you know, fight my way out of there with my 6H pencils. Cause you could like, you could stab somebody and, uh, cause a lot of damage with the 6H pencil, a, a 6B pencil. It, you know, you try to stab somebody with with a six H pencil, and it's gonna like break off, and it would probably it could cause a, an infection. I don't, I'm, this is a crazy line of thinking. Okay, um, so I think that hopefully that helps Peter. Um, 
I'm sorry that my, my audio cut out there a little bit uh, mid explanation, but I think you hopefully saw the difference there. So my recommendation just for this class would be HB or 2B pencil would be more than enough. Okay, I think um, I am out of breath. I'm a little bit uh, hungry and a little bit, I'm losing my mind a little bit. So uh, next class on Thursday, we're going to talk about drawing eyes. And I would suggest, where do I have my mirrors? I see them within quick reach. I don't. Um, is to just to grab a small mirror if you have one you can get them at the dollar store for a dollar and have that so that you can look in it while we're drawing because it's easier for you to study your own eye than it is for you to draw my eye or anything on the on the computer screen because that eye is always going to be with you right so it's always available to to use as your model um until then my friends we will see you uh, next week, or on, sorry, on Thursday. So enjoy the rest of your afternoon. And yeah, take care, everybody. See you soon.